You know the drill. On Hinge Recap! like they didn't make it out in time to save the village, but it looks like the people are still there and ready to fight, but Nami tells them, nah, this is my fight, and Luffy's like, no, our fight. Straw Hat Crew Unite! Cat, or maybe Rapid Dude is called to Garp, but luckily Garp sees right through the bullshit and looks like they're on their way to the Fishman Camp, where the Straw Hats break down the doors and attack. Zoro, Sandy, and Usopp stay outside to fight, while Nami and Luffy go inside to find Arlong. Usopp, ever the lovable coward, friends like hell from this guy with spitting powers, while Zoro and Sandy continue to be epic badasses. Arlong gives two more villain monologues, but Luffy's not having any of this shit. And it's time for round two. Usopp continues running while Zoro and Sandy continue badassing, and Buggy continues to be my favorite character as he stays true to himself and gets the heck out of there. So long, sweet prince. You will be missed. Usopp finally does something badass, but no one's around to see it. Well, Sanji and Dora take on this one guy, and Luffy takes on Arlong, but neither fight looks like it's going good. Because apparently Arlong can grow his teeth back, and this guy's also super freaking strong. And Arlong really likes his monologue, but Luffy realizes it's brains that beat Braun and tears down the map room around them. Luckily, outside, Sanji finds his strength through his crush on Nami and beats this guy's ass. Nami makes it out as Luffy pulls off epic awesomeness and brings down the house. Or I guess park, or temple. I don't really know what that thing is. And of course, quick fake up to make it seem like Luffy's dead, but Obviously, his rubberness is fine, and party at the village! And this is a lovely way to wrap up the series, and shit, there's a half hour left. Okay, second boss fight, and since Kobe and Helmeppo seem to have grown some consciousness, it's a family feud. And while Luffy's really getting his ass kicked, it's not looking good, but wait, I guess this was a grandpa test the whole time? Huh? Okay, sure. Bye, Marines. Nami says goodbye to her family. Kobe visits Luffy and gives him the best present ever. Look at that wanted poster! And then they say goodbye. Luffy rallies the crew while all of his friends from the series look on with pride, and in some cases, revenge. Kobe and Helmeppo are officially friends and are going to be trained by Garb. Mihawk visits an old friend who, it turns out, is a retired shank who's so proud of Luffy. Wonder where this friendship came from. And finally, we come back to the Straw Hats as we get the most epic of fan cheers as the main sail is finally dropped and they set out to the Grand Line. After what I'm assuming is another major fan cheer moment as they pledge to achieve their dreams together and sail into the title card. Who the heck is this guy? And that was the first season of the live-action One Piece. I went in expecting something, and boy did I get something! This really was an incredibly done show. I can't even imagine the pressure the creative team must have been under to get this show right, and man did they get it right! Of course, I don't need to remind everyone, I am an uncultured nerd and have no idea if this is at all close to the original show, but from the fan reactions and the fact that the original creator is involved, I'm guessing it's very close to the source. So, to talk about this episode specifically, it was a pretty incredible finale, and almost every character got their moment to shine. First, and most importantly, Buggy! Although I would have loved to see him fight again, his exit was really the only thing that made sense for his character. And we finally get the two best fighters in the group working together. Sanji and Zoro kick major ass, and I really love how different their fighting styles are, making their fights so much more exciting to watch. And also fun to see Major Wilhelm still getting work. Once again, we get some impressively long takes, and again, it seems like both these actors are doing a lot of their own fighting and a good number of stunts. There also seem to be a lot more blood in this fight, which has been somewhat lacking for previous episodes. I'm not sure if Netflix has standards and practices, but it seems like excessive blood was a no-go, but for this last episode, they got a little bit more freedom. Usopp's big fight was quite a bit more understated with just one foe, and it makes sense for his character growth. He doesn't have the experience Sanji and Zoro have, and although he only took down one fish dude, that was probably the first successful fight he's ever had. And I, for one, am so proud of him. And now the big boss battle, Luffy v. Arlong. I am so glad they did not overpower Luffy for this finale, for the most part. He did take down an entire building with one kick, but hey, it was cool, so whatever. Luffy admits he can't beat Arlong through pure strength, and for a while, it looks like he's not getting out of this thing on top. Also, I think this is the first time we've seen Luffy bleed since he got his powers, and it was a real shock to see. But but Luffy isn't just his powers, and what makes him a great captain is seeing all the strategic angles. I think that's the main thing he's been learning throughout this season, as he did start off by relying only on his powers and using very little strategy in his fights. However, we did see a little bit of growth at the end of each episode, like with Buggy figuring out how to put his different body parts in boxes, and then in episode 3 when he fought Clodor, using his top spidey senses, and then it came full circle when he figured out how he could take on Arlong. Seriously though, I need to learn more about nautical stuff, because 
because I guess good maps are worth more than gold in this world? It does make sense, since it seems like this world is mostly islands. We haven't seen too many places that had a lot of land. It's a cool departure from the usual fantasy world where it's just one big hunk of land surrounded by ocean. Seriously, it's always the same in these worlds. One big ass landmass surrounded by ocean and that's it. That's why my favorite Narnia book is Voyage of the Dawn Treader, cause in that one, it's all about what's past the big ass land chunk. In that case, star people, Midas cold water, toadstool dwarfs, fresh seawater, pretty flowers, a chunk of hell, and eventually, the edge of the world. The only thing I would have wanted to see more in this battle was a little fighting from Nami. I get that the last episode was her episode and we're back with the rest of the crew, but I would have liked to have seen her throw just a couple punches at least. But besides that, really awesome climax and a really good wrap up for the series and there's another half hour left. Yes, there is a secondary climax, which does feel kind of tacked on, but I can't really think of another way to do it because it was necessary for the character arcs. This fight was a little weird because it is a bit hard to buy that Garp would beat Luffy. This actor playing Garp has been good at emotionally filling the role, but physically, I'm not really sure it translates very well. Just from how he behaves, I'm guessing the original Garp is a very tall, super muscular guy, so his enormous strength would be more believable. I like this actor, but I think a Stephen Lang type may have been more believable for this fight. But that voice is very intimidating, so it makes sense why he was cast. And I can't tell you how hard I laughed when he finally revealed why he'd been chasing Luffy this whole time. He seriously spent all these marine resources and what I assume to be at least a couple weeks to teach his grandson a lesson. There were definitely easier ways of doing that, but I love that he chose this one. And now we're finally wrapping up on the series and nope, still 15 minutes left. It is true, this episode did go all Return of the King on us with about six different endings until finally we got to the last one. But like Return of the King, they were all individually good by themselves and all the character send-offs were earned because I wanted to see what they were going to do in the next chapter. Buggy and LV are teaming up, and by god, I would love to see what type of ship they decorate. Garp is training Kobe and Helmeppo, and hello there, Shank is still alive! I guess they never said he was dead, but I assumed he was, cause last we saw him was in a 10 year ago flashback. Seems he's just been chilling with his crew for a decade, and I guess is even more badass than we thought? Like, he's beaten Mihawk in a fight? What kind of history do these two have together? So many characters, so many questions, such a huge world to explore. And to explore that world, our crew, the Straw Hats, who are now bonded stronger than ever and I'm sure will be able to take on whatever the Grand Line throws at them, including impossible physics. And if what we've seen so far is any indication, this is one crazy ass world with some crazy ass characters who will give us a crazy ass time. And that is where our One Piece journey ends. It's been a fun ride watching this show and recapping it in an unhinged manner for my family and professor. As far as what the future holds, there's still eight weeks left in the semester, which need to be filled with at least one video a week. Family members, please give me suggestions, or if the algorithm has magically transported a newcomer, let me know if there's any other nerd show I have no knowledge of that would be worth checking out. So that's it for this chapter of the Uncultured Nerd Show Thank you, professors and family members for watching, and I'll be back with something new. See y'all later.